Good morning, church. Thank you, Susan and Alican, for that beautiful song. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I was preparing for today's sermon and my finals at the UFC last weekend, I took some rest by walking alongside the lake and breathing some fresh air with a fellow Chinese friend. Have you also taken some time to breathe recently? In our Lenten Bible study series, Pastor Sarah has introduced us to deep meditation on the power of ritual and led us into broad aspects of a sacred lifestyle with simple rituals like singing, like dancing, like hiking, etc. I think such simple rituals that help us connect with ourselves, with others, with nature, and with God would make our Lenten practice more meaningful, right? However, as I was writing my MDiv thesis on healing the body of Christ, and this Sunday message on the eternal priesthood of Jesus, I heard the tragic news of Asian people, especially Asian women, targeted in a set of violent attacks in Atlanta. Once again, we have sadly witnessed social injustice, division, and brokenness in this wounded land. Once again, people shadowed by the systemic racism and sexism of this country have tremendously suffered from the overspreading pandemics of hatred, bigotry, and hypocrisy. So I turn to today's scripture again last night with grief. But amazingly, God opened my eyes to the words of consolation in Hebrews 4 and 5 and inspired me to preach this message of woundedness and healing. As vulnerable sojourners on this planet Earth, we, as a people of God, have Jesus Christ, a heavenly priest who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses and to offer up prayers and supplications on our behalf. As a people of a living God, we are called to imitate Jesus Christ in the days of his flesh and to pray for people who are traumatized by overwhelming systems of injustice with loud cries and tears. For me, this is a genuine inflection of the priesthood of all believers and a true embodiment of the body of Christ. Amen. Now, before I get into today's message, I'd like to read a short poem first, written by Henry Lacoder, whose revolutionary message of a liberating priesthood aroused people's awareness of a tedious institutional priesthood in many European churches of the 19th century. The poem goes as follows. You are a priest forever to share all sufferings, to penetrate all secrets, to heal all wounds, to daily go from people to God and offer God their petitions, to daily return from God to people and offer them God's hope, to have a heart of fire for charity and a heart of bronze for chastity, to bless and be blessed forever. Oh God, what a life. And it is yours, O priest of Jesus Christ. In this beautiful poem, Lacoder adopts this imagery of a priest forever from Hebrews 4 and 5. And surprisingly, he attributes this priesthood not to Jesus Christ, but to Christ's faithful follower, who, like Christ, is all caring, yet all suffering in this world. His reviving poetry of hope inspired a whole generation of church young people in their pursuit for spiritual freedom and healing. His unremitting actions of faith 
brought about a series of revivals to filling the gap, the spiritual gap after French Revolution. However, despite all these tremendous success among his church people, he was seriously condemned by his church authorities for his proposals on the separation of church and state. He kept retreating from one place to another in tremendous pains and loneliness until his death. As we can see, Lakadere's vision amazingly echoes our Protestant conviction of the priesthood of all believers. His life, like Jesus, had been indeed made perfect through his sufferings. Similarly, the letter to the Hebrews is usually recognized as a book of faith and perfection. At one place it says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. At another place it says, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with the perseverance, the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. But someone might question, hasn't Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, carried all his believers across the finishing line already? For centuries, Hebrews 4 and 5 has also been widely understood in this way, as if Jesus died on the cross, was raised from the dead, and ascended to the heavens so that we can sit back and enjoy the fruits of his labor. On the one hand, we got to acknowledge that it is strongly suggested in today's scripture that everything that belongs to the Jewish sacrificial system has been perfected by Jesus into a way that make access to God permanent. In other words, through the spirit of transformation, the priesthood of the second temple Judaism has been fully displayed in the heavenly priesthood of Jesus Christ. As it's written in the scripture, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God, a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. In other words, a high priest forever. On the other hand, however, we've got to understand that this priestly ministry should not be restricted to Jesus or any elite priest alone. It should not be restricted to a single race, gender, or class of people alone. It belongs to the people of color and white people, women and men, queer and straight, poor and rich. Just as Aaron's priesthood could not be complete without Jesus' powerful transformation, Jesus' priesthood could not be complete either if it is without his followers' faithful participation on their spiritual journey. And unlike Lakodere's lonely priestly service, we are not just individual ministers that pray and praise in our own secret chambers. We are a community that prays and praises in this living space together. We are a community of Christ's eternal priesthood. Amen. A great example of such priesthood of all believers that transcends traditional understanding of a male dominant white elite priesthood is Dolores Williams' Black Sisterhood from her famous book, Sisters in the Wilderness. It is written for African American women who struggle for the survival of themselves and their family in the wilderness of the wide world. As a black woman and a womanist theologian, Williams describes what the faith of her mother, her grandmother, and her great-grandmother, the slave woman, has guided the formation of her black female identity in her spiritual journey. And after she learned to value both gains and losses, both failures and victories in her life, she set her focus on constructing a God talk from the point of view of African-American women. She paid attention to biblical themes of journey and home, 
of perfection and faith, just like the author of Hebrews, yet through the lens of a less known text in the Hebrew Bible, the Hagar story. In Genesis 21, when Hagar desperately cries out to God for her child Ishmael's dying situation and the future of her people, God sees their affliction and delivers the mother and the child from their lack of means of survival, responding to her naming of God as El Roy, the God who sees, the God who sees suffering and affliction. Through her power expressed in this action of naming and her determination not to use the names that others, especially her oppressors use to address God, Hagar exemplifies a way of coping with shortage of resources and social oppression for the sisters in the wilderness. Therefore, William thinks that Hagar's naming of God functions as an act of faith despite her many insecurities of daily threat in the wilderness, just like Jesus' prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death in the garden of Gethsemane. Based on her exegesis, William states that the wilderness of the wide world that the powerless and the marginalized black women enter day by day is both, both hostile and sacred at the same time. It opens up good opportunities and bad fortunes, whereas El Roy, the God who sees, guides their steps in the journey and constantly leads them home for restoration. And all this womanist God talk is rooted in her trust in the community of African-American sisters, in God's justice and mercy that brings healing to the world and in the power of home that offers security and survival. And echoing such sacred lifestyle, the famous gospel hymn, Take My Hand, Precious Lord, goes like this. Precious Lord, Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on through the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Oh, lead me home. Now revisiting Lekodeh's poem, we can see how the blessed priest takes their part in the world as a blessing of God for all people, sharing all sufferings and healing all wounds. I can't help but wondering, isn't this what God desires for us, a local body of Christ, and a community of Jesus' eternal priesthood? In this priesthood of all believers, we are appointed to offer prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears for the pains and sorrows of this broken world. In this priesthood of all believers, we are appointed to revere and remember the suffering of the oppressed and point out a new and living way toward eternal source of salvation. In this priesthood of all believers, we are appointed to stand between God and people as a resemblance of our heavenly high priest, Jesus, offering people's petitions to God and bring God's hope for people with words and actions of consolation. Amen. As we are coming to the finishing line of our Lenten journey, May we keep in our mind God's justice and mercy as we continue to walk through the liturgies of the coming Palm Sunday and the Holy Week. May we build up the body of Christ that shares the trauma of Jesus' crucifixion and the healing of Jesus' resurrection. May the Spirit motivate us 
to keep praying on behalf of this wounded land and this broken world, wandering over the experience of God's coming into torn flesh and love's arrival in the midst of violent ruptures. May God grant us courage and strength to follow Jesus, a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, in each step of the way along this sacred journey. Thanks be to God.